Chickamas River. To this day, actually, the uh, First Nations people have uh, different fishing rights uh, um, in all species, but including salmon, um, than uh, the, the white man does, let's put it that way. But uh, So the First Nations people, because historically the salmon have been a food fishery for them, and uh, so to this day they are allowed to harvest uh, more salmon. This, uh, we're now about 500 meters again above sea level, and you notice we're back in the snow, and uh, this snow, well, you can see there's nothing that looks like it's too fresh, but, uh, well, they're expecting uh, snow overnight and tomorrow uh, at Whistler, so it could fall right around here as well. That right from here inland, the snow, uh, you can expect to see it on the ground for about four months, uh, from mid-December mid, uh, till mid-April. Behind us in Vancouver, in Squamish, of course, right at sea level. Uh, again, we do get snow occasionally, but it's usually washed away by rain uh, within a few days. But here, it's colder. It's not going anywhere. The railway was pushed through this uh, valley in 1913. It was built to, to carry resources uh, from the interior, the central interior of British Columbia, the northern interior, down to the port of Squamish. In 1954, the railway was extended from Squamish down to Vancouver. So that's that track we saw when we were at uh, Porto Cove, for example. Um, but. Uh, and people traveled. There was uh, some train travel. The only way to get through this area, actually, uh, there were no roads, uh, so it was by uh, on foot or maybe on horseback or uh, by train. And uh, an enterprising couple named Alex and Myrtle Phillip uh, from the U.S. opened a fishing lodge at the edge of Alta Lake along the railway. It was called Rainbow Lodge.